Hello, everybody. It's me again, and I'm back with Leanne Johnstone. And Leanne is affiliate marketing guru S. <laughs> such a thing, a guru S? I don't know. Um, but I know a lot of people are curious about affiliate marketing because they've seen um, the people saying you can make all this money on YouTube ads and stuff like that. So, Leanne, first of all, thank you for coming. What really is affiliate marketing? The real stuff, not the gurus with the whiteboards and everything that we see on YouTube. Yeah, there's a lot of trash talk about affiliate marketing, but actually it's quite a strategic digital marketing channel. And um, to do it really well, um, and I guess to do anything really well, you make it look simple, but it's actually not. So, um, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, people that talk about, you know, you can get rich quick, you can, you know, promote all of these offers. And that's really not the type of affiliate marketing that I'm involved in. So what I do is I help big brands drive consistent sales by planning their strategy and looking at how affiliate partners or performance-based marketing can help leverage some of the other digital channels that they use to, um, you know, attract new customers and and sell more products. So um, really for me, it's, it's digital, it's another form of digital marketing, and it's really within the acquisition stage um, of acquiring new customers. Okay, so give me some examples of some industries that are using affiliate marketing. Is it just, you know, B2B? Is it just web? How does it work? Yeah, mostly web. Um, we do have a lot of kind of mobile app type affiliates as well. So I sit in um, across three sectors mainly. One is um, travel, finance, and then iGaming. So everything from kind of bingo and poker um, through to sports betting. Um, and all three of those sectors happen to be um, some of the most competitive. So obviously retail price, you know, very price led, um, travel and, and insurance also very um, competitive. So I'm quite used to sitting in that niche and, and dealing with brands that are, um, you know, quite restrictive. They're, they're also governed by regulation and, and rules in terms of how they can market to customers, but also, um, you know, doing really good business at the moment with performance-based marketing. And they use that as a big part of their digital acquisition because they only have to pay after the sale is com concluded. So they're getting all of this brand um, exposure, which is obviously quite attractive, especially now with budgets being as tight as what they are. Um, and having the strategy that sits behind how you leverage and work with all of those partners is really the sweet spot that I'm an expert in. It's really hard because you're effectively trying to incentivize other people to sell for you uh, on commission-based salespeople effectively. Pretty much, yeah. And so that that's quite a difficult thing to do because obviously you're asking them to give up real estate on their website, in their um, you know email campaigns, however it is that they're driving traffic. Um, and so you know understanding the price points and the value of traffic, it's almost it's it's quite a lot of media buying, um, and then quite a lot of relationship building because you need to have that trust and you need to um, collaborate, and it really is a 50-50 partnership. So understanding how that partnership marketing, affiliate marketing, performance marketing, whatever it is that you want to call it. Um, there is a whole strategy and framework that sits behind making that work from, you know, the foundations that you build your program in and the technology that you're using through to, you know, what you can afford to pay and how you price your, your program against your competitors. Yeah, because you want to you want to price it where you get people incentivized, but you don't want to make it in a position where because effectively you're handing your brand to third parties. You are. And so there needs to be rules and regulations about that. And that all forms part of your kind of program strategy. So, you know, how much leverage are you going to give these partners to use? Where does that leverage sit against what you're trying to achieve with your budget? Um, and then putting that all together into a big framework to kind of drive traffic um, and customer sales. So, you know, it, it doesn't sound complex at, at the top level, but actually when you think about all the moving parts, like any digital channel, you know, SEO, pay-per-click, whatever you're doing, there is a strategy and a framework that sits behind it. I'm glad I do what I do and you do what you do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I could say the same. Um, so how has COVID affected the kind of affiliate marketing space? Is it just clouding as normal or...? Um, it's actually, I've, I've actually literally just written an article about it today. So the numbers are quite fresh in my mind, but, um, in some instances, so for example, if I talk about the iGaming industry, um, obviously sports betting stopped literally for three months. So affiliates that were heavily in, invested in that, um, channel had to pivot very quickly in order to continue that their revenue would, um, you know, 
keep coming in. Um, the beauty of working with affiliate partners is that they are very agile marketers. They understand customers probably better than what brands do because they live it, eat it, sleep it, breathe it. So they are able to be very agile and, and pivot their content marketing strategies, pivot their web um, development um, and go where the kind of money is. Mm -hmm. um, and you can leverage that as a brand as well, obviously, and, and piggyback off of the strengths that they have because often for bigger brands, it's not as easy for them to pivot their marketing strategies or their budgets because they've committed to stuff, you know, for, for years in advance sometimes. Um, but in other industries, it's been a kind of free for all. So pricing has obviously been affected by COVID because, um, you know, budgets have been uh, realigned, repurposed, um, you know, traffic has changed, traffic volumes have changed. Um, people haven't been searching or buying certain things or they've been buying more of other things. So um, I think a lot of affiliates, have pivoted very quickly to obviously make the most of those opportunities. Um, and others have realized that they can't actually be highly invested in just one channel anymore. Like you can't just be an expert in one thing because what happens if that thing is no longer the thing that everybody wants to buy? Um, so I think a lot of learnings has come out of this for, for brands and for affiliate partners. So just to be provocative, yeah, you see yeah. these ads on YouTube with I'm going to say this in a particular way and I'm going to, it's no, I'm not being ageist, but I'm probably being ageist a little bit like 19 year old kids with no life experience saying yeah. that if you pay them $997 or $12,000, they can show you how you can make a six and seven figure income. Okay. So um, yeah, I mean, this is the, the kind of not so nice part of affiliate marketing. If that was true, I would be a millionaire because I've been doing <laughs> it for 20 years. So nothing comes easy and there's no ways that you can build something out of nothing without having a strategy, without having budget, without having like concrete steps that you follow. So there is a lot of the kind of guru type um, broadcasting in the affiliate channel, which is unfortunate because it obviously... Um, you know, tends to let people think that that's a kind of nasty channel or channel that they shouldn't be investing in. And it's just full of people are going to like money grab and not deliver. But on the flip side, you know, talking to somebody like me who's been in this industry two decades, I've seen programs grow from zero to multi-million dollar businesses with global brands that started out with nothing. Um, and I can see the benefits of working with affiliate marketing when it's done properly. So key emphasis is that if you want to do affiliate marketing, you ask an expert, like any kind of digital channel. You know, you don't just go and become an SEO. You don't just go and understand how to media buy. It's, you know, there's principles that sit behind best practice. There's, um, you know, rules and regulations and things that you need to follow as a, as a brand advertiser. Um, and all of these things need to be tweaked so that they suit your business. There is no... Uh, one size fits all framework. And that's something that I'm quite passionate about. Um, in in my industry, in the agency service, you know, when 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 we are dealing with clients, um, there is no one size fits all strategy when it comes to marketing. Every single brand is unique and every single brand has different USPs. And like you would match that to your SEO strategy or your advertising strategy, we do the same in the affiliate space. So I'm going to ask you to cast your crystal ball. Yeah. You're in a particular sector of the marketing world. But you've got your feelers out about what's happening. You know people who aren't in the affiliate space. How? What's the? What's the? What's the temperature you're gauging, or what's the vibe or feeling you're getting from other people about how this next six months, year, eighteen months is going to play out? Hopefully, post COVID. Yeah. So I really do, I mean, I do speak to a lot of people across the length and breadth of the digital marketing space, and there are very much two schools of thought that are happening at the moment. There's the brands that are buttoning down the hatches, cutting costs, you know, putting people on furlough, doing what they need to do in order to get through for the next three to six months, if, if not longer. And then there are brands that are looking at this like an opportunity. Now, anybody that's lived through a recession in digital or, you know, who has been in the workforce during a recession, what you tend to find is a lot of innovation. So yes, it's very tough. Yes, budgets are, are kind of you know narrowed and, and focused and maybe even cut in some instances, but somehow there's always innovation that comes out. Um, and the affiliate channel has been 
on the cusp of a kind of the next stage evolution. And I think that what we're going to find is a big differential in, in terms of pricing. So we've always looked at affiliates as being paid per performance. I think what you're going to find is the lines between paid media and performance marketing are going to blur um, because pricing is going to be affected, budgets are going to be affected, and the way that brands spend their money, um, they're not going to be so cat um I don't even know if categoristic is a word, but they're not going to say, okay, I've got this much for SEO and I've got this much for PPC and I've got this much for social media. They're going to just blend that budget to wherever the, the money is coming in, wherever the customers are coming in and where they're getting the, the basically the best CPA. Um, so I think it is a second and seed period. You know, you are going to get brands that are going to just cut back and hang tight and see what happens when they come out the other side. And then there are going to be brands that are going to spend like nobody's watching and they're going to just, you know, put help, put uh, pedal to metal and see what comes in. And, you know, at this point, it's anybody's guess who's going to win. You know, is it the tortoise or the hare? Yeah. So let me ask you this then. You've just talked about um, people are going to put their money where it works. Mm. How many businesses really know what works? Well, I think that's another thing. I mean, data and analytics, it's always a nightmare. Um, I deal with, you know, big, huge international clients that need to ask a BI team to get them some stats. And I deal with small clients who are agile and have like really sophisticated systems that they've built themselves to see a customer's journey and life cycle. So I think, you know, data is going to become more important. And I think that if people have good sources of data, they'll be able to make better, more intelligent decisions about where they spend their money and where they actually um, acquire new customers at the right price point and at the right kind of life cycle journey because you know you're looking at everything you're looking at where do i find a new customer but also where do i pick up a repeat customer and who's bringing me that channel so i think a lot of money should be spent on lead generation but i'm a little bit biased because i'm always about acquisition and very little about retention um, and that's just where the affiliate uh, model sits um, but i'm pretty sure that you're going to see a lot of innovation i've already seen a lot of really cool tools that have sort of come to market and, and been launched that I've never seen before that can, you know, help save time, Im improve resourcing, um, you know, shortcut uh, some of the administration tasks and things that, we're, that we have to do manually. So I think we're on the cusp of a sort of digital evolution as well, because as times change, as market forces change, the way that we do our digital marketing is going to change too. I'm obviously heavily in B2B space. Yeah. How can a B2B business leverage affiliate marketing? So, I mean, the one thing that I like to talk about is kind of the way that we use um, lead generation and affiliate marketing. I think any business can use that same strategy. So before we even reach out to a customer to say, hey, come buy our stuff, there's a whole full process that sits behind that. Um, I think getting strategic with your lead generation is important because you're not going to have a lot of time to do uh, spray and pray stuff. And I don't believe that any of that stuff works anymore. It needs to be targeted. It needs to be considered. Um, yeah, I think, I think lead generation is probably where it's at for now, at least for the next three to six months. When you say lead generation... How do you know what is a good lead generation strategy versus a bad? And I, the reason I say this is not, um, we all get hit up by people who can generate leads for us every single day. If you're in business and you've got a pulse, you're getting hit up. But these, <laughs> these organizations are like 10 a penny. Yeah. Literally, oh, I was a freelance graphic designer. Oh, I figured something out. I'll become a lead generation company. I think that the results speak volumes. I mean, I get, you know, tapped up on LinkedIn a million times a day saying, you know, I'm going to increase your brand exposure. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Um, and then you look at their profile and you go, well, really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so I think, you know, actions speak louder than words. Have you got, you know, have you got proof that actually what you are saying and what you can do has been verified by other people? And really in, a, in the affiliate space, that's one of the key things that I, I always tell clients. It's like if somebody's promised you that you're going to get a thousand leads off of a hundred dollars, if it looks funny and it smells funny, it's not going to work. Like it's just keep it real, you know. Um, nothing uh, good ever comes easy. I mean, it just, that's just the way of the world, you know. You there's a lot of hard graft, a lot of work, a lot of prep, um, and a lot of strategy that sits behind it. And the best tip I can give anybody, and I'm pretty sure you'll probably say the same, is if you want something done properly, go to an expert. Like, don't even waste your time. You know, you can spend months trying to do something yourself, or you can just pay somebody who knows how to do it, has a proven track record, and get it done right the first time. Really depends on on how you want to kind of run your business. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you one last question. 
and then uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but, <laughs> and this is a really difficult question, but I'm asking it because a lot of people want to know this figure. Yeah. How much do you reckon it costs? Uh, and again, you feel free to define this however you want. Yeah. In a B2B space, how much should people be budgeting as a percentage of their revenue for acquiring new customers? Wow. I mean, that is like how long is a piece of string answer, right? So let's say it's a percentage of the sale value. I mean, what? if I had, okay, so percentage of the sale value, I would look at anything between 20 and 50%. Because depending on the value of your customer, I mean, for me, a customer is worth, it takes a long time to con convert to customer as an agency. Um, but, you know, so so here's a good example if we're going to talk numbers. I'm quite happy to spend anything between three and a half and 10 grand going to a really big exhibition and pulling in 150 leads. And I know that I would be able to convert maybe 50 of those 150 leads, right? Like within a, a 12 month period, put it that way. Um, you know, not everybody's ready to kind of launch their programs and do everything on the day after you've met them. So my lead generation pool is maybe different to somebody who's, um, you know, selling a service. So selling like, you know, accountancy uh, services or financial services, you know, stuff that you need immediately. Um, also, my client is a very high level client. So I'm not looking for somebody who's going to pay me 500 bucks a month. I'm looking for somebody who's going to pay me, you know, 10 grand a month for like big strategy pieces. Yeah. So for me, I'm quite happy to spend 50% of what I'm making to get that client because I'm still going to be able to make a profit out of that um, because I'm the one giving the strategy. So it's really my time. Um, and, and then you need to offset that between branding as well. So it really depends on what kind of marketing you do because the 50% that I'm spending to go to a really major exhibition, I'm also getting really good brand value for so that maybe I don't get them this time, but next time they'll stop by the stand and they'll come and say hello as well. So it depends on what kind of marketing you're doing. But I think a, a really good rule of thumb is, you know, anything between 20 and 50%. Okay. Your net profit. So, because a lot of people go, oh, uh, and, and I, I speak to a lot of people and they say, oh, we can just do ads and we'll get customers and inquiries. And then, then when you, you start yeah. to kind of work the maths out of that and go, well, for every hundred, you know, it's a click doesn't equal a sale. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, a form filled in doesn't equal a customer. So, and then you've got the people who, the wrong people who click and it doesn't matter how clever you are and how targeted you are, there will always be people who creep in with the wrong people. That's just life. Yeah. Um, so you go, well, out of the hundred, how many of them are the right people? How many can afford to buy? And it may well be that, you know, a lead costs you something like a hundred quid. Mm. I know we're kind of pulling numbers out the air. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, that, that, you see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, if you could bring me leads and a hundred quid, I'd be, I'd be your new best friend because, yeah. I'm, I'm totally happy with that. The, I think where the problem comes in is that smaller businesses are nervous to spend the money up front without getting an ROI. But the thing about digital is that once you've nailed your customer, and it's the same for affiliates, once you've nailed your customer, you know where they hang out, you understand who they are, what they need, and how you can service them, any money that you spend on digital is going to pay back in dividends because you can track it it's 100 percent transparent and if it's not right you can change it in a heartbeat because everything is live mm -hmm. so i think it's about having a little bit of faith it's about kind of tying your boat up to the right pier like working with an expert um and then just kind of letting go and trust and you know i think you and i've had that experience i mean yeah. when you met me i was a little bit like you know you're gonna be kind of dealing with my social channels but uh, it's you know i think you just you have to just let go and let let the experts do their job okay one more and then i promise i'll i'll leave you be when you're doing things like web traffic and things like that to try and gain customers intent is really important in that um you know say i'm mr affiliate here and mm. I, please don't give away your trade secrets or anything but i'm just curious and i think people will be curious to know yeah you can get the right people there with no intentions of buying. Yes. What are some of the things that like takeaways we could give people about how do they find their customers with intent to buy versus the right demographic, but no intentions of buying? That is probably one of the hardest things. And that, I mean, in my industry, it might be different for yours, but in my industry, in the affiliate industry, I, 
I want affiliates that are dealing with content that is at the end of the buyer journey. So I don't know if if you you know if your if your viewers will understand. There's a buy there's a process, awareness, consideration, intent, purchase, and repeat purchase. I think that's the kind of buyer funnel. I'm always looking for affiliates that actually sit in all of those channels, because in in affiliate marketing you can track right down to the last click where the person has come from and all the clicks before that. So depending on how your tracking and, and um, data centers are set up on your front end platform, you get a lot of that analytics, a lot of that attribution stuff can be seen in affiliate programs. So that's what helps to actually spend the budget a little bit better, which is why it's so such a popular um, acquisition medium for bigger brands. So I think, um, you need to be everywhere in the buyer journey, but spending your, your hard earned dollar is probably in like the stage before intent and then purchase. Um, and if you can kind of narrow that down based on content, based on type of website, based on how leads are captured on that that kind of space or how, how they are engaged on that space, um, you know, I think you've, you've kind of won half the battle. But bearing in mind also that even though um, sometimes you want to spend on um, a lead converting into a sale. It's not wasted spend when a lead doesn't convert into a sale because it just means that the time wasn't right. Um, many times I've pitched clients, um, you know, who, who've come in as a, as a qualified lead, but the timing just wasn't right for them. And they've come back to me six months later, 12 months later, and they've won the business because I didn't try and sell them something that they didn't need. And I think that's the thing about digital, any digital. A lot of people view digital as being, like, you know, they've been burned by it because they've worked with people that haven't been experts or, you know, they've lost money because they didn't really know what they were doing. Um, and if that is the case, then you, you clearly were not doing it right because I deal with customers every day that spend millions of pounds in digital because it's the only channel that they can track. Um, you know, print and everything else is also fine. It depends on what your business is. I'm not saying that, you know, digital is the only way to go, but it really is kind of, if you're not, if you don't have a digital footprint right now, you're missing out. You're missing out in, on actually engaging with your customer so yeah i mean i hope that answered your question yeah i, th I think so I, it's just for me i've seen lots of people going oh i've i've done digital marketing and it doesn't work uh, it didn't, and, work, didn't do it properly that's why yeah, i mean you can target people even if you just use simple facebook ads you can target people but if your message is the wrong message for them they might be in you know let's say we did a, a, a campaign now me and you we do a campaign to accountants yeah we could find the perfect targeting for the accountants. So the ad's going in front of accountants. But if that message is wrong, uh, yeah. get people, you know, and I talk about this till the cows come home, is that your copy on your, on your ad or whatever you're putting out in terms of marketing content, it has to help the person seeing it self-identify that this is for them. And I have to agree that you are 100% correct. And, I, and it reminds me of a conversation that we had a few weeks ago where you said, tell me what it is that you do. And at the end of the conversation, after I've given you, given you my two-minute elevator pitch, you said, okay, so you help people sell more stuff. <laughs> it was as simple as, you know, and I was like, uh, yeah, okay, take all the jargon and everything out. That's what I do. It doesn't matter how I do it. What the end result is of what I do is that I help people sell more stuff. Um, and I think content marketing is a big part of that and not everybody is a content writer and it's also very difficult for you as a as a business owner or as a brand to market yourself effectively especially if you're the owner of the, of the brand so and again using you know professional services and people that can actually help you hone that that message and that in you know to so that you do get intent is very very important mm. so what do you think the rest of 2020 looks like for you Leanne for me, I'm busy. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm creating. I'm in a creating mode at the moment. So I'm creating product. I'm you know I'm looking to um, educate a lot more people to build community values because I do believe that coming out of this, the psychological side of of being in lockdown and working um, remotely, and you know your whole life lifestyle has changed. Some countries more than others. Um, or less than others, I, I just feel like the way that we interact with, them, with one another is going to be different. And therefore, the, the products that I create need to be different and need to help people to get to where they need to be maybe quicker. Um, so, you know, looking at things like masterminds, training, 
Um, that kind of stuff's really important to me because I want to teach other people what I have learned. And I think there's a big responsibility for, and I am age, I am going to be ageist here, but for us oldies who have been around the block a few times to help some of the younger generation of digital marketers coming in, because the only way that we have learned our craft is by doing it over and over again and learning that way. Whereas younger people are coming in and, and expected to kind of learn from textbooks. And we know nothing ever goes that way in the real world and every brand is different. So whilst you can learn best practice, you can learn the principles, the application of that, which is similar to your intent, yeah. is always different. Um, so I wanna kind of spend my time looking at that space and, and maybe get into more like coaching stuff. Okay. And, and let's say there's somebody watching this and going, maybe they've had a go at trying to use affiliates or maybe they think this might be a, an interesting thing. And a simplest form of an affiliate scheme is, is like a referral scheme effectively. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, um, if it, you don't even need to have a program. You can have five partners that you enter into an affiliate relationship with. And the, the setup, the framework, the commercials, the negotiation, everything that happens, the account management, all of that stuff can be done on a very simplistic way, you know, and it can still benefit your, your business. So it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I kind of do the big corporate global stuff, but Anybody that's looking for help with an affiliate program, I will be happy to help and advise them. Um, I think I've got a free ebook on my website that you can download. And I'll give you the A to Z anyway. So, um, and that's, you know, totally free. Anybody can access that. Okay. So, Leanne, um, I'm going to wrap up here because my editor is going to go nuts. But uh, where's the best place to connect with you? What, what What's the best yeah. channel to reach you? Very simply, hello at leannejohnstone.com. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. you taking the time out. Um, uh, we talk regularly, so I'll see you again. But please do find Leanne's social channels. Uh, she pumps out lots of useful stuff. So, you, you know, even if you're a bit of a skin flint, watch her content because she's always giving stuff that you can use and help. But obviously, if you want to really get serious about affiliate marketing, Leanne is your guru -ess.